we saw GDP, for example, the US debt um, compared to the GDP is around, around about 130% in the US. Um, we see the, the Fed is printing money like crazy, like never before. Yeah. I think we just crossed $8 trillion. Um, yeah. We see um, um, M1 went up like 26% or something last year. They said they will print more this year, 21%. It's more, like 35%, yeah. 35 even, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. They say inflation is transitory, which is a joke. And perhaps in 2025, they will increase uh, interest rates. You know, we all know they can't, they, they, they won't do it. They will find another excuse why they can't uh, raise rates so it's just it, it's 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 a game they, they try to buy time actually and keep the people uh, uninformed and uh, keep them in in treasuries and everything so what's what's your scenario you think it will happen this decade and what do you think how will it play out how will that oh, i think i think there's i think there's no doubt that it happens this decade i mean mm -hmm. I, this is the fourth turning it started in no way they tend to, they're never more than 30 years long 20 to 30 years long yeah. so 20 years takes you to 2028, 20, and you know maybe it's a little longer, but I, I'm quite certain it's going to happen within a decade, probably much sooner. Definitely. I don't know within the next year or two, but I'm guessing. I'm guessing the next move is gold breaks out, and uh, and I'm guessing the next move is Bitcoin goes up and, and starts goes through 60,000 and starts heading to 100, and more and more people start realizing, hey, this is an issue. They're out of control, and I don't know what the other side will do. They'll 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 have levers. They'll pull, and they'll they'll do jawboning. I mean, they may try to tax Bitcoin or tax gold. I mean, they'll they'll do everything they can to shoot these canaries. I yeah. mean, these are the canaries in the coal mine saying there's something wrong monetarily, right? So they'll do they'll do things. I mean, they've done it in the past. They you know they banned sh short selling. I mean, it's you know they're look we're playing for all the marbles here, right? So people can't be naive and think that this is going to be an easy battle. It hasn't been easy so far. It's not going to be easy going forward, but. They're trapped. I mean, they're completely trapped, and we know we're going to win. We just don't know on what time scale. So, you know, eventually, what I think will happen is at some point, then okay, so so gold breaks out, inflation's persistent. They back off and say, yeah, we we realize there really is inflation, but that's okay. We're going to let it keep going for a while, and we're going to maybe start to increase, you know, interest rates. Maybe they really will raise interest rates a little bit because, and they'll still be way behind the curve. I mean, in the '70s, you know, interest rates were going up, but inflation was going up faster. So, so that could happen. My gut, though, is what the biggest thing that's going to happen is that the, the bond market's going to say, huh, this isn't working for me. Ten years at one point, you know, four, three or whatever it is today. That's no good. I can't. I'm, I'm you know, I'm out of here. Right. And so bonds are going to start to sell off and stocks may hang in there just because they do represent a claim on a business that will get have value when it reprices. But bonds are going to sell off and then the Fed's going to say, OK, well, we can't have rates go up that much. We're going to start buying those bonds, which makes their balance sheet even bigger. I mean, just to give you an, just to give you an order of magnitude, some friends and I have mapped it out. We we think the Fed balance sheet will hit a hundred trillion dollars this this you know this in the next five years. Okay, it's at wow. eight right now. Wow. We, I mean, it's 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 going to get nutty. I mean, this stuff is going to get nutty. I mean, you know, and we're all going to be multi multi millionaires even with small gold and silver investments today. The problem is gasoline's going to be. Well, in, in Germany, it probably already is ten dollars a gallon, but here it's going to be ten or fifteen dollars a gallon, and you know, steak is going to be a hundred dollars a kilo. I mean, it's you know, all these prices are going to move, you know, very, very rapidly higher. And so the key is to be in what's going to relatively hold its value, which which is gold and silver. But you know, it, and it's impossible, by the way, to know exactly what every move and counter move will be. But history shows that you know, in one of these events, if you're on the right side of it, you're going to do fine. How fine, we don't know. Will there be ups and downs? Absolutely. You know, and, and you want to be careful to not, you know, buy the rip. I mean, I have some new investors who, for example, joined my fund last August, right? I mean, last August, we were all having a lot of fun, right? Yeah. I mean, things were ripping. Gold was ripping, you know, 2050. I'd go, I mean, we took out the all-time high, all my stock. I mean, I, my fund was up 126% last year, right? And in August, everybody and their brother came piling in. Oh, my God, I got to get in. I got to in. Well, and they haven't made any money since then. They haven't lost much either. I mean, down 5 or 10%. But and they're just kind of hanging around and, and they're kind of like, well, you know, what's going on? Why isn't this working? Well, you know, because these things, I mean, you know, you're talking about a huge change in the monetary system and it doesn't just, things don't turn on a dime. I mean, this is an ocean liner or a battleship and it takes yeah. time to turn yeah. one of these things. So, you know, it's going to be several years and I think it all kind of gets climatic and concludes by maybe 2025, 2026. And I think they will do what they should be doing right now, which is saying we're going to restructure, reduce the debt and reprice everything in gold terms and go back to a gold standard. To me, that's the that's the intelligent, prudent, fair way to reset the system. The system's broken. It needs to be reset. 
The error that broke the system was we got involved in fiat and we believed Keynes and we believed in this whole Keynesian thing that we could just keep making the numbers bigger with debt. And, and that's wrong. It's just proven to be wrong. It's, it's abundantly clear. The, the sad thing is that no, no politician today, even if some of them know it, and I think very few do, no politician today has the, has the guts or really even the backing to do it. It's going to take a total collapse yeah. before, you know, and then everyone's going to say, oh, I get it. You know, those guys printed money. That's not going to work. You know, there'll be a very brief period where it'll be really useful to have silver coins because people won't be accepting paper money. And then hopefully some new politician will come in and say, you know what, the mistake we made was we abandoned what's written in the Constitution that only silver and gold are money. And we're going to go back to having silver and gold as money. And of course, in the old money terms, they're going to be enormously higher price wise. But, you know, things will get repaired. I mean, you know, I've read all the histories and I mean, all of your, you know, I don't know your, your listeners, you know, the ages of your listeners, how much they vary. I mean, there are probably very few that were actually alive in the, in the 21 to 23 period in Germany, but I'm sure there are plenty of your listeners who had grandparents who were alive yeah. mm -hmm. in that period. And it was a disaster. And, and yet, if you read about it very carefully, you know, they, they actually, when they went back to backing the, the currency with land and they went, and then ultimately with gold, it became, you know, things, things can get repaired very quickly. I mean, if we don't get into a shooting war and we don't start doing really stupid things like going to communism or socialism, if we were to go back to a sound money system, we could reset this. Now, there would be winners and losers. People who own debt in the old system would obviously lose. People yeah. who hold sound money would obviously win. But, you know, it's not as if we're going to destroy the factories and we're going to kill people. And, we're, you know, that doesn't have to happen. All we're talking about is a monetary reset. Yeah. And, and it's, it's inevitable. I mean, it's absolutely inevitable because of the math. I mean, if you go to my Twitter feed, you know, the top of my Twitter feed, my pinned tweet just kind of shows the growth in debt compared to the growth in GDP. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, anyone can do this math very simply. You compound one number at a much higher rate than the other number. And eventually, you know, it's the GDP that supports the debt. Eventually, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the debt goes parabolic and the GDP can't support it. And so the debt collapses. And Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. You know, this has been going on for a long time. I mean, we've had many, many debt collapses over the millennium. Sure. Um, you know, and, and the problem is that the last one, the last one in, for the world really kind of occurred in the 1900 to 1940 time frame you know, as a result of, of, you know, the creation of the Federal Reserve and World War I and World War II and all the sovereign debt that got created. And so, you know, that collapse led to the Great Depression. And then, of course, you know, Bernanke went to Harvard and MIT and learned the wrong lesson and said, well, it, it, you know, the Great Depression occurred because we didn't print enough money. Whereas, you know, the right lesson is the Austrian lesson, which is the Great Depression occurred because, you know, the Fed was so goddamn loose that they let a bubble form in 1929. And that's, you know, that's exactly what they're doing again. You know, the, the, the nature of the bubble in the stock market right now, I'm, I'm just writing my quarterly report. It's stunning. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. And I'm, I don't know how much you folks see it in, in Germany, but we certainly see it in the United States. I mean, the things that are happening here are just crazy. I mean, Dogecoin, you know, GameStop, yeah. you know, SPACs. I mean, you just, you, you know, there's, there's so much money flowing around and Check chasing, yeah. chasing silly, silly ideas that this, I mean, this, I was around in 2000. I was in the dot-com investing area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mm. yeah, I bought a lot of internet companies in 93 and 4 when they were private. And of course, I was trying to sell everything that wasn't nailed down in 2000. And I looked at my partner at the time and I said, are we the only two men in the world who still believe that a company is worth its future cash flows? Yeah. Because none of, none of this none of this looks anything like that, right? And, and so, you know, I mean, you could see it coming. And, and you know, to cash me, that's... Cash burn crazy. rate, you know, remember that? <laughs> the oh, cash yeah, burn yeah, rate yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it was... <laughs> It was not our eyeballs or, or click throughs or whatever. Yeah, no, they had all kinds of new metrics that, you know, Mary Meeker and, and you know, Henry Blodgett were saying, yeah, you know, exactly. justified these valuations, even though. But Blodgett we have the same right now. Look at the, look at the NASDAQ. Yeah. Look at the valuation of some companies. They are crazy, oh, yeah. mind blowing. And this is the it's actually a proof that we are the end of a speculation cycle. Yeah. My it's my opinion. And um, if you see how cheap money is and you see the valuations yeah. of some companies, it's crazy. We are, all the parameters, all the indices show you that we are more more expensive than in 2000, 2007 or 2008 Schiller ratio. Um, yeah. Warren Buffett indicator, Q yeah. factor, everything. You know, it's it's uh, yeah, the, the margin debts. The margin debts are crazy. I think yeah, like no, nine hundred yeah. B 
billion so far. Yeah, no, we're, we're, we're up against the red line in absolutely every yeah. area. And, and Mark, as you know, the difficulty with these bubbles is, and I, is, is they can go a long way and then they can double again. I mean, it's funny because in the, in the, dot, com, in the dot com area in 1998, if you recall the summer of 98, the LTCM blew up and the Russian crisis occurred. And that thing had gone a long way. And I thought to myself, you know what, this bubble's over. I mean, these dot com things are way. No, I was just getting started. Exactly. And so that's why, you know, I, I you know, you never want to never say never in terms of timing. And I know some people, I mean, in fact, I think you had him on your show as an excellent analyst, David Hunter. He thinks we're going to go up another 50% from here. Melt up. He, we see a melt up, of course. Yeah. And he yeah. could be right. I mean, he yeah. could be right. I, I personally don't, I don't share his view on that. I think, I think we're pretty close to the end game. I mean, you know, from my experience, and you know, I'm, I'm 64 and I've, so I've been investing since I got out of college. From my experience, this reminds me very much of March of 2000. Wow. I mean, I, okay. yeah, I, I, I think I think it's just about done. To happen. I, okay. Yeah. I think I think we're just about done. All right. That's, that's just a gut feeling. And Hunter could be right. I mean, we could melt up from here. I mean, one thing's for sure, you know, look at what's going on in Washington, D.C. They've got their foot to the pedal. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, the amount of money they spent, the stimulus. I mean, crazy. it's crazy. And they're listening crazy. to Stephanie Kelton, who's modern monetary theory. I mean, this is all it's happening. It's yeah. happening. It's a solution. But, you know, we have to we have to agree. You know, everybody thought after 2008 and after we saw that um, the Fed printed more money than ever before, everybody thought every Austrian, of course, OK, they print more money. We will see inflation. And we were yeah. wrong. You were wrong. We were we, wrong. We, yeah. Actually, we saw the opposite. We, we saw, were saw inflation. Wrong. We saw yeah. inflation, and we saw, and everybody came out and said, "Hey, you guys, we are wrong. There is no inflation, and this yep. time is different." And now Stephanie Kelton comes out and says, "Hey, guys, you were wrong in 2008. You will be wrong again in 2021 or two, right. 2022. We right. can print money out of thin air. We can create right. prosperity. Right. Right. We can print the Dow Jones to 50, 60,000, and nothing happens because right. we can print yeah. it. Perhaps they're right. Perhaps we're wrong. So where are oh, we no, right no, now? No, What's no, your opinion? No, no. They're, they're, they're going to be wrong. This, this isn't 2008. What they were able to do was to start another credit cycle at a exactly. higher level. So, so the dot-com credit cycle, you know, the dot-com bubble was focused on internet fine and technology. Yeah. The housing bubble was focused on the biggest asset that everyone owns, housing market. Now they're doing it at the sovereign level. Okay, it's it's the exact same model. So, and unless they intend to do it at the intergalactic level, I don't know. I mean, what's what's the higher level? There isn't one. Okay, everything there bubble. One. Yeah, the, everything we're bubble. in an we're in an everything bubble, and they don't have another level to go to. So they, they and they can't restart it. So so Kelton's full of shit. I mean, it's just that that's it's not going to happen. I agree. The other thing is the other thing that's going on. The reason they had a lot of good ways that they they tamped down inflation last time around. They did Operation Twist which fooled the bond market, you know, by taking the long rates down. I mean, basically in 2011, I remember it very clearly in 2011, inflation was breaking out. Okay. Gasoline here was five bucks. Food prices were going up. They had a real problem and they knew it. And gold was going, gold was at 1900. I mean, they knew they were in trouble. And so they did, they did an operation and they basically sure. put operation twist in where they took long rates down to fool people into thinking that inflation was lower. And they attacked the gold market with paper gold in a very, very big way. They had, you know, I remember it very clearly. They all went down to the White House. They had a conference about it. They came out of that. Goldman said short gold. And, you know, then some volumes in the gold market went through that have never been done before. The kinds of things that only could have been done by central banks. Yeah. And so so they basically, you know, rigged the market and bought themselves a lot more time while they, you know, pushed money into everything else and let the economy recover. And, yeah. you know, they may try something similar again. I don't know what they have in their playbook. I mean, they're pretty evil people. So, I'm sure they have some ideas so, as to yeah. how, how they're going to how they're going to counter this one. Yeah, but what, my, what belief, we, what, my belief is that we're going to overwhelm them. So yeah, go ahead. They, they 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 won't give up the fight, you know. That's for sure. Oh, no. They they try to keep this um, fiat um, scam on definitely, and we have to pay for it. But they hate gold. They hate Bitcoin. They hate sound right. money. They want to yeah. have the privilege to print money out of thin air and have the, yeah. the opportunity yeah. to, to to give us slavery. Do you think we we, we are in a commodity? Oh, very market? much so. Very okay. much so. Yeah. So we've had this deflationary impulse from 1980 yeah. to 2020. I think it just ended. I think these cycles run until they, until they end. And I think this one has pretty much ended. I mean, we've had an enormous deflation. Interest rates are pegged at zero. Debt is very, very high. And, you know, you're seeing a money, money velocity is very low, but about to increase. And I, I think we've just started another inflationary cycle. And so, you know, I mean, I don't know if this one runs 10 years, 20 years, 40 years. I mean, who knows? But but I know that it feels to me like we hit the bottom of the commodity cycle. Mm -hmm. And 
I mean, if you go look at all those commodity charts, in fact, I just in the quarterly report I'm writing, I have one in there. I mean, commodities have just, I mean, it's, I, I think the last time this many commodities went up 50% in this shorter period of time was over 50 years ago. Yeah, true story. So that was in the early, in the early yeah. 70s when we really had commodity inflation. And mm -hmm. I remember that period of time pretty well. I was a teenager, you know, at the time. And I mean, the inflation was just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, if we're in a commodity super cycle, what's your price target for gold and silver end of this decade? I, I kind of think infinite because I think fiat's going to fail. So, in, you know, in, in dollar terms, I, I really do. We'll be through $2,000 on gold sometime in the next six months. I yeah. strongly believe that. Okay. Yeah, same here. That, then, um, we'll be, then we'll be aiming for three. Then from three, we'll probably correct back to two. Then the next wave will probably take us to five. Yeah. I mean, I can see the system holding together until we get to $10,000 gold. Mm -hmm. At which point in time, at that point, I could see, I mean, so so here's what's going to happen. I and mean, we talked earlier about how it's going to happen. At some point, Gresham's law is going to kick in. Oh, okay. okay. So, so you're going to have hyper gold or hyper Bitcoinization, right? So, so I mean, at some point, literally everybody's going to have gotten the joke yeah. and go, holy shit. These, do these dollars are going away. I, I mean, I know that, and, and everybody's going to literally get paid and use whatever, you know, any money they get their hands on, they're going to use it to buy gold, silver, or Bitcoin. And at that point in time, the price, is, they're just going to go straight up. Yeah. And the currency is going to fail. Nobody's going to want dollars. Exactly. People, yeah. people are going to say, pay me in silver, pay me in gold, pay me in Bitcoin, but I sure don't want these dollars. And that that's that's kind of the end point of Gresham's law. And you know, if you do, if you do the one, if you do the Deutschmark from 21 to 23, you can kind of see it. Yeah. You get these bumps, you get these bumps, you get bumps, and then eventually it gets pretty steep, and then it just goes off the chart. Yeah. And that's that's really currency failure. And it, it happened in Venezuela, it happened in Zimbabwe. I mean, you can see this. I mean, there've been over 100 hyperinflations in the last 300 years. So there are plenty of examples of this. And and that that inflection point occurs. I've, I've studied a lot. I've read many many books on the subject. That inflection point occurs when a tipping point of the average man realizes, holy shit, this is never going to stop. They're going to print forever. Yeah. This thing I'm holding is becoming worthless. I got to get out of here. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members, where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.